You've probably seen approach plates in magazines, books, or in online articles, but have never thought to use them in your flights and flying because you thought they weren't needed or perhaps you were confused by all the data, arrows, numbers, circles, and symbols that look as if someone added them only to confuse you even more. However, approach plates are a great tool not only for IFR, ILS flying, but also VFR flying. Pilots, even those of us in the flight sim world, would find landing in poor weather or conditions to be virtually impossible without these important diagrams. An approach plate, or as they are also more officially called terminal procedures, show the specific procedure that you must follow for a particular type of approach to a given runway. They show altitudes and headings you need to fly as well as obstacles, terrain, and potentially conflicting airspace. Furthermore, they also list missed approach procedures and commonly used radio frequencies. So perhaps the best way to talk about the feature of an approach plate is by working from the top left to the bottom right. So let's look at the top row. We see LOC, DME, I, S, and Q is the NAVID information for this approach using a localizer of S and Q on a frequency of 110.3. It also lists the channel number as some aircraft radios can tune by channels. Approach CRS is the magnetic heading for the approach, which in this case is 161 degrees. Runway landing identifies the length of the runway, which in this case is 11,901 feet. It also lists the touchdown zone elevation of 433 feet and our airport ele ele elevation of 433 feet also. The header identifies the type of the approach, which in this case is an ILS or localizer approach to runway 16 left, and of course the airport name, which in this case is Seattle. Make sure you have the right plate in front of you before you begin the approach. The middle row indicates flight information related to the airport. Notice the T inside the triangle. This indicates that takeoff minimums are non-standard, or that there is a published departure procedure, or both. We also have information on lighting system used at the airport and a detailed missed approach procedure should we need to carry one out. The bottom row lists frequencies that are available at this airport. Remember, that if, if you're flying online, these are probably going to be slightly different. The plan view shows the airport as if you were looking down at it, as well as the location of navids and terrain. It shows the basic flight path to follow, as well as other helpful information. This overhead view is used primarily to get your aircraft to the approach area, as well as directional guidance needed to align your aircraft with the proper approach route. Everything is drawn to scale for more accuracy inside a 10 nautical mile circle. The overhead view also shows location of fixes, intersections, points, radials, holding areas, missed approach turns, and more. So let's look at some of the symbols and see what they mean. Minimum sector altitude shows the safe altitude to fly around the approach reference, NAVID, in this case Seattle. The circle shows the radius that the safe altitude applies to, in this case 25 nautical miles, surrounding Seattle. This symbol shows an obstacle at an elevation measured in MSL, means sea level. It's listed in MSL because you as the pilot will be more concerned with your altimeter reading than converting to feet above ground. The bigger dot inside a bigger wedge indicates the highest obstacle on a diagram. A dot with no corresponding wedge marker indicates measured ground elevations at that particular spot given in feet MSL. So for instance, the 3,149 indicates an obstacle at 3,149 feet above mean sea level. The procedure track. This bold line arrow indicates the approach path or procedure track inbound to the airport. It shows a heading value in the center of the arrow. So in this example, a heading of 161 is shown as the procedure track for the approach. Missed approach. Okay, so you've reached a missed approach point but couldn't get a visual of the runway, so you execute a missed approach. In this case, it's climb on a heading of 161 degrees to CAVIB at or below 2,000 feet, then climb to 5,000 via the SEA radial of 161 to MILT and hold at 5,000. I could write a complete article on holding and holding patterns, so we'll need to keep it simple here. 
All you need to do basically is enter holding by one of three methods depending on your entry heading and the back course of the holding pattern. It's either direct entry, teardrop entry, or parallel outbound entry. Direct entry is the most common of the three methods because it applies when approaching the holding fix in half of the possible directions. This gives you and ATC time to prepare for another attempt at landing. The reason is it's important to follow a missed approach route is in case the airport has obstacles nearby and under IFR conditions may not be seen by the pilot. So the missed approach route is designed to protect your aircraft from obstacles, terrain, and even other traffic. Initial approach fix. Pain is an example of an initial approach fix and it's the most likely point that you would use if you were approaching from the north. Notice the 5000. This is the altitude that you should be at when flying this approach. Airport. Now, this one is probably obvious to you. It's the runways of the airport. The small drawing indicates a simplified sketch of the airfield and its orientation relative to the approach route. The profile view is a side look at the approach start to finish. This view concentrates on showing elevation changes as you approach the runway. It uses most of the same symbols as the plan view. The principal purpose of the profile view is to show you your altitude and how it will change as you fly the procedure track towards the air forward. The approach minus, minima section contains altitude restrictions that correlate with the approach speed of your aircraft. These altitudes are restrictive altitudes that you must fly while at certain phases of the approach. They are intended to provide you with obstacle, traffic clearance, and smooth altitude transitions while on the approach. Missed approach instructions. These instructions explain what steps are necessary in order to ex execute the missed approach. They detail the turning and climbing directions as well. I already covered these, so we won't go into much detail here. The missed approach point. This is a location during the approach path that requires a positive visual identification of the runway environment for you to land. If you can't see the runway at this point, while maintaining the minimum allowed altitude, you must execute a missed approach. This point is also the point on the approach where you can descend below the minimum descent altitude if you have identified the runway. Approach minima category. An approach plate will list different categories for approaches, such as A, B, C, D, E, and Copter, and are, they're based basically on airspeed of your aircraft. So Seattle has A, B, C, and D, so like category A is aircrafts that are usually slow, single prop, 60 to 90 knots. Category B are aircraft that are usually moderate, about 90 to 120 knots, and category C and E, such as a heavy or 737, 747, are aircraft that are fast, they're jet, multi-turboprop aircraft, uh, anything above 120. So values for the approach are shown below each category. These values represent altitudes and visibilities required for using the approach to land on that particular runway. So approach types for runway 16 left. Well, the SILS 16 left indicates a straight approach for runway 16 left. This means that there will be little course deviation from 161 and once you reach the missed approach point you'll fly directly to the runway threshold for landing. In the real world flying you wouldn't be allowed to circle around the field for example in a pattern when flying this approach.